Well, I've had to start that thing manually with this thing because the button seems to suddenly just have broken on the back of my camera. Well, it's not the end of the world. I'll just close that for now. Oh, it's running. I'll have to, oh god, hand crank it to switch it off. <laughs> oh, that means I have to edit bits off the end. Oh, my folks, they're making a noise. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I just kicked my guitar. Oh, it was a disaster. Ah. Right, the reason I was just giving a quick, I suppose I better keep that out, I was doing a little quick um, video, just a quickie, just to show you this Gordon Smith guitar, which um, James has just brought me in. I don't know the names of these things, it's a GS160, that could have been made in January 1960, I know it hasn't. Anyway, it's, um, it's a very simple guitar. As you can see, it's a sort of sort of a bit of a junior style thing. Um, one pickup, a bit of gold hardware, black plastics, nice. Well, I suppose it's a mahogany neck, uh, mahogany neck and body, by the looks of it. Um, yeah, very nice all round. Um, brass nut. Just a, a very slim looking thing. I mean, it's dead easy. Well, probably dead easy to play. It'd be interesting to know how it feels on a strap because of the lack of weight in the body. Um, you never know, it could be could end up being neck heavy, which would be a bit of a, a shame. Um, but it's in because it's got a problem with the bridge. Um, it's a, obviously being a set neck, there's not, no adjustment you can make in terms of shimming necks or anything like that. Hmm, just about balanced actually. Nice simple thing, punk rock, here we come. Um, uh, yeah, that feels pretty pretty good. It's not going anywhere. It's just on the balance, actually. So you you can feel it. You can feel it. Um, you know, just feel a slippy slippy uh, stroke. Might just go down at, down by the head. But anyway, so there we have it. Um, yeah, but the reason it's in is. James took it in part exchange or swapped it out, traded it out for something. Uh, what did he trade? He traded the PRS blue, Lagoon blue coloured PRS thing. Very nice. We've seen it through here um, previously. But anyway, so this is in because there's a, an issue with the bridge. Can't get the action down. That's an odd bridge. It's a kind of, it's, it's a tone prose bridge. So it's quite funky. It's got... So it's a wraparound bridge with the um, adjuster and the uh, intonation adjusters directly above the ball ends of the strings. But the problem with it on this guitar is you can't can't get it any lower, and it's got a strange arrangement. So you can see that those things aren't like the tops of the posts; they screw into the posts. They're sort of well, they're, they're cosmetic, really. And then into that you've got these posty bits here which can't go any lower um, and what a previous owner has done has kind of cut away the wood here to allow this little step on this thing here to go as low as uh, sort of drop below the surface of the wood to get a bit more action out of it so you know the issue here first of all that's that's trapped so they've got to get that one out by pl pliers um, and there's no other way of doing it. I mean, I'm just going to hold on to it. Wow, it doesn't want to come out. I don't know how that's been locked in place. Anyway, um, so the, I guess it's been done up really tightly to try and eke out the last little bit of down force. And actually, this has been this has been dremeled down. <laughs> that's what someone's done. They've actually reduced this below the surface of the yeah. I hadn't looked at it closely. So James, that, you were right, because James was saying, can you reduce that any further? I was going, no, you can't really, but somebody has actually taken this. They've spent time drilling that down or, or drem dremeling it that down and then creating space around it to, to sink these little platforms in. But ultimately, you're going to run out um, when the thing is on the deck anyway. There's, as it stands, there's no further you can go. It doesn't matter about getting these little platformers down any lower. If, if the six sits on the wood then that's your lot. Um, so it'd be interesting, what I've got it here for is 
uh, I've ordered the gold standard bridge. Um, did I order? I think I ordered a. Um, it wasn't a roller. No, I ordered a standard intonated uh, wraparound bridge. A bit like this. This is James's, but um, a bit like this. This is made in Japan, believe it or not. A bit like this one, only um, gold. And the idea was that what we can do is don't let's not dig any further down into this thing. Let's put these put these into a reasonable level, um, and then let's try putting uh, a modern uh, thingy compensated bridge. I'll just do it for now o onto there like that. Well, actually, no, put it get the proper footings in. So that that first and foremost depends. How well that works depends on whether a modern, a modern tunematic bridge footing fits in there. Oh, a mouthful. So somewhere today, I just um, yes, a new one I got in, um, and I mean, as an example, this is this will be a roller bridge. In fact, this is a roller bridge, and it's for my LP double cut. And building, um, but it's a good example of the sort of standard Chinese replacement thing. And actually, this is a, a, a nice unit to replace any tunematic bridge anyway, because it's got got a fair bit more intonation and travel than um, and some things. And that's making it difficult to open it. Yeah, so as a, as a, you get an advantage when you buy these as replacements for tunematic bridges. The, um, the benefit is that not only are they better because they're rollers, but also they, they tend to have a little more depth in the body. Um, not a massive amount, but there is a little bit more front to back movement. So the question is, does this kind of bridge, like, although we're not using this type, but do the modern footings work with this Gordon Smith? Now they might discover instantly a resounding knot on your nelly, and I think we might find it that isn't uh, a similar pitch thread. Now, if that's the case, then we have a sort of limited number of options. I mean, we can, we can, there's no reason actually why not continue using these. The, the, the chances of ripping those out of the body of this guitar would be, could be quite slim. So we could clean up these bushings because I feel they're a bit clagged up, but we could keep them and then you might find, well that's a different, that's a different um, size altogether, which is typical for a tunematic. But as you can see here, it fits a, 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 a typical, um, typical Chinese bridge. And I've got another one somewhere around here that I use for, I don't know where it's gone now, I use it for positioning, uh, bridge positioning. Now, Put it somewhere. No, I'm not going to be able to find it. Um, if I could find it, it would be a good one to demonstrate. I've probably got a few floating around in my parts bin somewhere. No, but, oh yeah, here it is. Okay, so this is one I use. This is one I use for positioning um, bridges. But it's good to use as a, an example of is that basically the same size unit as this. In terms of the position of the uprights it is. So there's no reason when the gold one comes I think what we're going to do is replace that one. Now the, the main question is um, it's, this is a little bit taller than that one. Um, I haven't got the dimensions written down anywhere but they're slightly curved as well so it's not a bad, it's actually not a bad example to use this one. Um, let's imagine it was gold, then you can still put on your pretty top cover, top cover piece. So you can keep. Hmm, well that's the problem. You can use all of that, but then you're left with trying to resell that. The alternative is um, you use the original tone press, but file that down. The reason I was suggesting using a replacement gold bridge is that we can file it down, and the filing down bit. Um, would be uh, would allow us to have more range of movement on the on the bridge. So I guess if we just take these out together, right, and let's think about the flat surface 
um, given that we we probably can get these to sit flush a bit of tidying up here we could get these to fl sit flush with the wood surface so let's take that as our start point right here and what we're looking at is the using one of these bridges what do we get as the clearance over the fingerboard and actually that's below the level so we, technically we, we would be looking at a, um, a, a raising this up for a workable playing action that would be off the ground a little bit which is great that's what we'd want um, and I suppose the, it's hard to tell because it's curved I can't really measure it as is this but you can see that well you might have said but if you put the two side by side you can see that pound for pound this one is considerably taller than this one and as a result with this one you you've got the problem of not being able to lower it if we get a gold one of these and we replace it in there like that we should be able to get a really nice playing action and still have a bit of up and down adjustment now this these adjusters are really terrible they're made they're made with four flat surfaces so you can get a, a wrench onto them um, but if you put it down below the, the level of the thing you can't get the wrench onto it because you're trying to put it below the level now like I said we don't need to we don't really need to make it go too far down we just need it to be flush enough to the um, to the wood so that we, the one we put the new bridge on uh, it'll have some some play so I'll give you a look at it from this way um, this is a bit uh, crude isn't the right word it's a bit messy but it's, it's understandable because it's it's incredibly difficult to, to once you've got a hole this big there isn't really any way of of making that hole uh, any bigger or tidier than that it's um, yeah it's a, it's a manual process at this point so I guess it's done quite a good job of hollowing that out without widening the damage area so we're not really going to be able to fix that in any meaningful way the only way it would do it would be to pull these out and um, uh, but I have to say I don't know whether these are glued in or anything and I also don't know how they're right now how the um, earth wire goes through to there so presuming that's grounded um, the, the difficulty is if you sell this well it's not a difficulty actually if you sell this bridge to someone else actually without the footing they would be better off using a new system so in a way the gold things that will come with the new bridge sold with this will make this usable again because you really can't get that out but it will it'll just be without this this cute top but on the other hand you'll, you'll get a I think um, with that bridge that's coming you'll get that kind of top which isn't actually that dissimilar to that so I think it will it'll end up working um, so let's put my bits back in here for the time being um, so what do I need to do well realistically we really need to just trial this out um, with a bridge like this obviously I've ordered the gold one so it looks the part. Um, James is, seems keen to keep this one so it's not really and the fact that it's non-original isn't a massive uh, issue um, but let's see let's see what the adjustability looks like when we've got um, when we've got this type of bridge on so what I'll do first is I'm gonna just try and get a bit of grease on the um, grease onto these things because they're a bit feeling a bit crunchy at the moment so these are the permanent sort of partner of this um, and like I say there's there's no point going further downwards um, in there you're just going to dig a bigger hole um, what we'll do is if if the bridge we choose doesn't fit then I recommend cutting away the underside of the bridge because it's a 15 quid alloy bridge and we might as well cut that down in size as, as um, you know do anything to the body of this guitar the, the bridge is kind of cheap and sacrificial if you like now, this isn't a brilliant fit so I don't know what's happened to the thread on here before but I think we just bottom line is I think we will we will let's have just have a think now we need if we're going to do any adjustment we, we don't now we don't want this to be 
actually right the way down. We, we really want it within the realms of adjustment, so we need it kind of, if anything, sticking up a little bit. So we've got some, we've got some grip. Now it's going to be a little bit different on both sides, and then, and and also since this this here bridge type of bridge is not going to be, um, uh, it's not going to be adjustable from here. It's not like. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a shame because that the other kind of bridge uh, adjuster is just sensible. We're, we're sort of limited to this rather crap system. However, even though it's a crap system, we can do a lot towards getting it lined up from the beginning. So let's say we get we get a I don't know what these were from now. I've lost lost sight of what anything is anymore. <laughs> these are, I've got a set of tens here. I know that much. Um, but let's take a string off here. Um, and let's let's do let's do oops low and high E just to see these are pretty thick so crikey what are they what are they and why would I use something this chunky what was it that was already on it wow fifty two it's a monster. Okay, well, why don't we just use what's already hanging off the other bridge? A, eh? yes. Why don't we? I think we'll we'll just put the uh, put, we should put some be, make sense to put some new ones back on when we finally sort out the bridge part. But I don't think it's going to be that difficult. These are too big for anything. Let's try and let's try and reuse what came on this guitar, which I also think I, I think they were quite heavy. I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. Again, when you've got coiled up strings, you're in a bit of a tricky situation because there's nothing wants to come undone. Everything just wants to stay tangled. And you think, well, can I push that through there and will that undo it all? <laughs> Promising. Possibly. Oh, hey, oh, maybe. If you've got time, you have to then go into the process of untangling things. Um, but if you haven't got time, you have to try and hook them out without causing further cr crimps and tangles. And all I want is a low E, damn it. Right, let's see if we can pull out the low E a minute. It's a nice thing, this, this Tone Pro's bridge, but it is. Jesus, where's that string gone? It's oversized and bulky and it's obviously not going to work. Interestingly, I don't suppose it was original. Maybe it was original, but I'm interested if it was original for this guitar, where would the, where would the clearance have gone? You know, why, why has that changed? I don't really see much. There's not a lot of movement you would expect in this, as far as I can understand. Oh, holy crap, get through there and stay through there, would you? Thank you. Okay, so, so given our, oh, see that's, that's the problem with this kind of thing. Oh, what a, what a crap system. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll put the string on here first. The, the problem with this, as you can see, is that I can't get this bridge to stay on here until I, until I tighten up. That, um, <laughs> that tighten up the bridge, but I can't tighten up the bridge or I can't adjust the action until I've, uh, you know what I mean. If I tighten up the bridge, then I'm condemned to a high action. Now I'm looking at this, and that's still high. Now that's fine because in principle we can uh, we could take these down, but that gives us no room for adjustment. Um, now the problem with well, the issue with these, this kind of bridge here, is if we if we amend this kind of bridge, and I might, I mean, I don't know if James particularly actually, this is a bit disposable because it's a it's made for a wound G rather than plain G. Um, so if we were going to do uh, try and lower this now, rather than try and drop those down, we need to see how far we can get away by taking it down here. 
Now there's a certain amount we can do before we run into these um, grub screws and the problem with that is that we need the grub screws for adjustment. Uh, all of this, practically speaking, starts to look really boring and difficult and a load of destructive stuff. Now the problem is if I were to be able to pull out these, um, these things here, these feet, uh, it would give us a, an option to put some rosewood in there maybe and to fill these holes and put some new footings in. But we would still have to, but judging by this, we'll, we'll still have to um, cut away the underside of this piece. And the problem with that is if we cut so far, if we have to cut more than one and a half millimeters, we're then running into this grub screw. And that um, stops the stops us being able to do the micro uh, intonation adjustment which although it's compensated you still need a gross one to move backwards and forwards and the problem with that is that I have no idea if these are in the exact correct position um, so this but what's, what's curious about this is why this doesn't even line up to work with this guitar in the first place and is it a design flaw because the angle is the angle of this is not the same as the angle of a, a an SG, um, you know, Les Paul. It's shallower, but it's not flat like a, a strat style arrangement. So we are somewhere in between, in, in such a way that suggests that possibly uh, there's nothing, no bridge in existence that's going to work adequately with this, which makes me really wonder about the design of it. Again, if we just get the pickup out of the way and we let's go to go to here and we just run that down the frets themselves right and we run off the end here so what you can do is you can say okay in that position i've got practically no room to put a bridge under there at all of this thickness i've got absolutely no room to put this one in under here that is that's on the ground um even if i were to pull out those studs I would start with a bridge like this that um, cannot work unless we sink the, uh, the original studs in flush. In that case, we we would get let's have a feel. It's a bit hard to do. We would get uh, difficult to do without something permanently in place. But we've got we've got what looks like about two mils. That would be the. the top of the or even if we've got it flush we'd have two mils to come up and then a mill mil and a half two mils we get about four mils but we'd need to be able to do the adjustments and that's not going to be possible with this system um, so I think we're gonna to have to try and pull these out actually having said all the opposite beforehand because without these things out um, we're never going to be able to adjust it and this there's no amount of material we can take off this to make this bridge work how it worked with this system I'll never know I mean it couldn't have done it's as simple as that this is so high that even with this sitting on the deck that's too high for this the, the set of this neck and that neck hasn't actually can't have gone anywhere that, that B Action, oh Christ. Technically, <laughs> I see what they've tried to do. I mean, technically you could possibly just get away with that. That's too high on the outside. Well, that's, that's another question, by the way, is what the hell radius is this thing doing versus the radius of the neck, um, of the bridge? So, assuming, assuming that 12, no, it's a bit flat than 12. So, that might be compound for all I know, but. Sort of 16-ish there. 
probably 16 there as well. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a 16, 16 inch radius and we've got we've got a, a, a neck here, a, a, a lead, a lead, a lead attached to this body with That's, that's a 12 I would say. So you've got a 12 inch, I mean you've got higher action at the sides and this one happens to be hard to tell but this is closer to the 16. Um, so that would be a better shape. Let's see what this one comes in at. I think they're usually over 12. Yeah. Very difficult to do on this because it's but yeah not far off actually. So this this could work on the deck basically, but there's no downward adjustment at all. Even if we can screw in those stops, if we replace them and go with the standard one, um, and if we can get it flush with the ground, then we have. We have um, we can get it flush because that would sit in. We'd have to pull these, and then we have got what looks like about four millimeters of movement, which we can do from above because we'll have replaced these footings. That, of course, all depends on whether these footings will come out. The positive of that, if we can get those footings out, is that we could make them available to go with the other bridge. But the issue is, is, is that bridge viable to use anymore with this? I think the answer is no. And the question now is how would you get this out? And there are not a lot of devices that will help me lever that out very well. Um, we've got chunky screwdrivers. We've got, obviously we need to put, um, pad out the wood and make, make um, protective uh, the protective surfaces to, to allow levering to go on. There's not a lot of leverage space under there. Um, so we're going to need a like, oh, nice little piece of timber that I pinched off Claire the other day, which is not far off. Just about exactly right. <laughs> this sort of thing. Down with this sort of thing. So it's always a bit of a, a one-sided leverage but it's not a bad start. There we go. I'm pleased that's coming up. Hurrah. Good good uh, good start. Good start. Good start. Good start. Wow, nice and solid I have to say. Yeah brass or so, yeah brass and you can see where a lot of it's been ground out. Now we can grind that out, we can make those holes bigger uh, the truth is if you're going to use continue to use this bridge, why wouldn't you then sink it in a a, route, a routed footing, which you could then replace this? You tidy up those holes with a with a nicely shaped slot, which all of this could sit in, and you'd be able to use this bridge for an hour until the cows come home. Hmm. But let's see. Now this one. Presumably has some some sort of attachment to a round wire, an earth wire. This is quite quite a good way of doing it. I'm not quite pleased with that as a first result. That one is moving a little bit. Okay, and there is, oh, I don't know where, I, if and where there is any bridge ground going into that, your guess is as good as mine. Can't, uh, can't see anything. Oh, there's a little curly bit of wire there that might go through a hole, possibly. Yeah, oh good, that's fine. Right, so, those are those. 
those are those. Now, this is what I'm thinking out loud of. We're never going to be able to use that original bridge again, unless we're never going to survive, unless never going to use that again, unless we do something like this. For example. There's the holes. It's just um, yeah, sort of line that up a bit. Down the outside of there. Down the outside of there. Down the outside of there, if I can make any marks at all. Okay. So you have a shape like that. Um, which you could, could route. We could make it a little bit bigger, but just big enough to seat this in. And you could sink that. And it's, but then you'd have to have a little run up to allow you to get a hex key into such a place as this. Because right. if that goes down too far, you won't be able to reach that. Unless you have shortened your hex key, which is possible, a special key. So, anyway, the, all of that to use the existing bridge which won't exactly keep any value because it's not original because you'll have routed that out. So the alternative is, obviously this isn't the right piece, but the alternative would be, maybe I've got them in gold. Tunematic posts. Okay. No doubt I have somewhere. But it's not those, it's not that. Where's the kind of one I'm looking for? It's sort of that. It's this sort of thing in gold. Oh. That's weird, isn't that? Why haven't I got any of those? I've got them in black. So it's that sort of thing, right? Uh, come on, which is which? They're all different. Well, let's assume those are a bit a bit the same. So what we'd have is we'd have a we'd, we'd have to get the right diameter, which these are different. Those are slightly narrower. We have to make we have to out, drill out those slightly, drop in new ones, and then these become into there. Those go flush with the surface, and then on top of that, on goes your new bridge in gold, obviously. So you end up with something that looks kind of a bit like that. And this time actually goes up and down with the adjuster turning and has the backwards and forwards adjustment on it. So I think, James, that is the best solution for this. Um, but it does mean slightly widening this hole here, which is <coughs> no big deal which will go to the sort of diameter of uh, this or any one of these gold pieces. Because if you notice, these bits are all sort of mostly, at this modern size, these bits are mostly interchangeable. Yep, so that would be our gold footing in there, gold top, gold mm, bridge, like that. Yeah, I think it's the best. It's the best outcome. It's what we ought to do. So we know that we've got a diameter on this one. This is nice because it's brass, but there we go. We've got a diameter of um, just over 11. So kind of 11 on the whole and about 11.12. <coughs> So that's 11, and this would be a whole of, uh, so that's 11.50, and that 
is 12. It's typical half sizes, 1150. So what did I say this was? So the hole would be 1150. This hole is currently 11. Probably even widen this out with a Dremel rather than um, rather than re-drill it actually. Okay, so and we know we know for a fact, do, don't we? We know for a fact this pitch is not right for this. No, it's definitely not right. We also know that we could lower this some more, but that isn't going to help us get this on any more anyway, is it? No matter what we do, we are bottomed out. And we know that we can't go any further down in there, that's sort of at its limits. Um, okay, right. Let's put these off to one side. That belongs with that. Where's the partner of that? That goes with that. So what it means is you can pretty much sell on the whole bridge unit on its own. Um, I'll do that off camera. But anyway, the point that's the point. So James, if you're looking at this, <coughs> we'll end up with a gold bridge on here. This is just a dummy with top adjusters. Uh, it'll be simpler, it'll have a backwards and forwards movement and it'll be a, a million times simpler than trying to use that existing thing which won't give you any adjustment room at all. I'll just um, kind of give you an idea of that. Now this one, as it happens, this one sits right on the top which is where we'd want it to sit. So, if I was to have another quick look with my low E for example, I know it's not it's not ideal, but let's imagine this was the bridge. <coughs> put that on there for a minute and put that through there. We should it should work quite well. That's just a, an example. You actually look at this. Wow. <laughs> you know the funny part is you could just shove that on and it play it'd play absolutely brilliantly. Jammed forward in the hole, tilting forward. <laughs> That's actually not a bad action. But of course that defeats the object because we do want it to be flat and therefore a little bit lower. So it's gonna it's gonna work. That'll be how it works. -da. All right. Oh, I'm going to have to turn this back. Uh, hang on a sec. No, the button's definitely conked. Oh, lorks. Somebody's going to have to invent a new do way of doing things. Can I somehow make a switch that goes around here? I have to do something different here. Um, this is the Gordon Smith, which I'm putting a new bridge in. But to make it work, I'm going to have to hook up an earth to the uh, what's that, that thing called? Mm, the thing is called bridge post. And previously it had a guitar string in there, um, connected somewhere in here. Now, the problem is it's a tiny little thin wire and that's broken. Getting it out because I had to get it out to drill out the post size. And now I've got to put another replacement in, which might as well be the same sort of material. But that means I need to give it a little bit of covering off. Um, I don't want too much of this, so I'm just trying to keep it away from things that shouldn't be touching. Now, the question is, do I try and stick this on with a bit of heat, which might well do. Let's find where the heat has gone. The heat is gone. Do, do, do. There it is. Everything's got a song in it. I'll try and do it without boiling my own hands. Uh, right. Stay. Okay, so I've got this guitar string, steel guitar string, which will go down through the uh, little special hole 
Oh well, I think it will anyway. We did a minute ago, damn it. Come on, through you go. Right, that goes sticking out through there. Come back to that in a minute. And then we're gonna, I'm heating up the soldering iron because I need now, need now to bend it round so I can in some way or other solder it to something here. Don't mind actually if we get more, more um, sticking through one way or another. Sorry, I'm not making much sense. Right, that's going into the hole. So I'm going to try this massive unholy blob of solder here. I'm going to try and attack, attach this to there. Very precise way of talking. To stick this on there, I've got I've lost my. Oh, I can never find the things I need. Right. They're probably just staring me in the face. No, they're not. They're gone somewhere. Tall, thin, blue things that do the thing. Where the hell did I put them? It's not those. Ah, oh, those are my, those are my brain. I'll have to use these for the time being until I find the other ones. Right. So the idea is, I'm going to try and add this. It's an interesting little arrangement. There's a, there's a push, sorry, push, uh, pull, push switch, and the maker. I don't know if it's Gordon Smith that's done this, but they've had to carve away. The inside of their little cabin, 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 cover <laughs> in order to fit that in um, because it's the same problem as I got with my little thin SG type guitars it's not enough room still we'll give it a go let's do the best we can do to put these new things on no, I'm still making no sense um, yes there's no problem with that I just need to anchor this ground into here then I need to hammer home the recipient bridge post up against the wire. It shouldn't be a problem. And then I need to just drill out or gently dremel out the other post so that fits too. And it's just a very slow, careful process of making sure that um, I get them in there or get them to the right diameter. It, obviously, you can't get a really you can't really get a, a drill bit in there. Um, that's not going to do anything. It's not sticking to there at all. Yeah, you can't get a drill bit onto the. Um, in, you can't drill, literally drill out those holes. They're, they're almost too too close to the actual size already. So you just have only opportunity. Only option, if I can speak, is to worry them larger. If you get what I'm saying, a bit of a technical term. I'm just going to enlarge them by hand. Now I'm just trying to add this earth thing just lightly to the top of this mountain of solder that's already there. It does require putting quite a lot of heat into the whole thing which I'm rather do without but I think I've done it. Okay that's all of that, that's all of that and then what we should have coming out here is a doink, our little Wire. Now, what I want to do with that is cut it down to size. I'm not sure. Do I want it to go down the side? Probably do. Let's cut it to size here. So all I care about is that it touches on this thingy there. And now what I'm going to do, having got that to the size I think it should be, I'm going to use my skill and judgment to knock it home. <laughs> I've got a very good reach on this. Tidy, lovely gerbly. Right, so that's one part of our setup done. And it has to be connecting with the earth wire because there ain't no other thing it could be doing. So what we're going to end up with is that like that. Yay. It's going to be groovy. It's not the lowest action in the world, but I'll have a look at it. And if we do need to lower it, then we'll lower from underneath here. We've got two millimeters at least scrape away leeway on there, which is very good. Plenty to work with. So what won't happen is that won't fit in there. So I'm going to do a bit of adjustment work.
It's a lot of kind of weird dust as mahogany when you when you use a Dremel sanding bit like that. <coughs> it's very fine. It's not like um, sawdust, familiar sawdust. Okay, not quite there yet. scientific as you can tell <coughs> but limited options at this point for making this work so all I want is this to go in there and then I'm going to give it a jolly good thwock now technically you might think it might be worth putting um, glue in there but I think that's probably just as good if it jumps out we'll know stops. Oh, what a good to believe it. About a trilli trillimeter off. I'm going to have to do a little bit of adjustment. There's some stuff you really can't control, like where things end up. It's just about workable, but it's a fraction too wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tiny adjustment to the uh, inside of this here to make it fit. Now this is a 12, no, 15 quid, what do you call it? See, it wants to it probably will do it if you lift it up and get a bit of play in these, you probably find it fits. There you go, it does. But it's just a little bit on the tight side. So bearing in mind you'll never vis visually, you'll never see the inside of this. Um, it goes, doesn't it? Do I want to grind anything? Well, it just tightens up as you go further down. See any downside on it? Yeah, it's quite, quite tough. You should really, should really, um, yeah, do a little bit of extending. Again, as I say, it's a 15 pound bridge, so there's no real harm in making amendments to it. Probably use the same tool with fit. Nearly. Hmm. Oh, well, that's a bit screwed at the best of times. The mandrel had its day. Same with this one. I'll probably destroy this one as well. side as well <clears throat> and it will work a treat yeah, it's just 
one of those one of those things. The, the bridge positioning and the post positioning is difficult at the best of times, even when you've got a sort of precision <coughs> start point and you can just go ahead and drill. When you've got existing holes that you can only drill out crudely, it's, it's difficult. Further. I have a feeling it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so down on the deck, it's still. <clears throat> it's, it's, could do a little fraction more either side. <sighs> I want to make sure it works. That's the main thing. Not probably not the best tool, but what the hell. <laughs> Is. I, mean, I could I could help it on its way a little bit, but I don't want to crush the stuff, so I'll keep doing it this way. Um, yeah, very very little, very unforgiving when you don't get it exactly on the spot to begin with. There you go. Lovely. Why is it still still stiff? <clears throat> Why is that? Not quite wide enough at the far end. <coughs> I'll go right up. <coughs> excuse me, right up to the back for a minute. And, uh, round it out at the back, and then we should be <coughs> on the mark. Same 
the, the ruin of this mandrel. the way you want it. So there's a little bit of play in that direction. That's the, that's normal. That's the difference in size. Jolly good. Okay, put those back in there for gross intonation adjustments. It's nice and warm now this bridge. Make sure they just poke through the back for a second. We'll leave them where they are. Groovy, okay. That's fine. <clears throat> now, the only other thing that's done, that's done, that's done. The only thing, other thing I need to check in a minute is where the gold screw's gone. Hello. Oh. All right, where did I put the gold screws? Sorry. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll need to <clears throat> just check the actual action in a minute. And if it's not good, then we have to file some from the underside. And I'll do that with a, a, a saw, a, a saw uh, an actual file, to make sure that the uh, bridge sits low enough to give us a range of up and downward action that we need. And the simplest way is to start by making sure everything's on the on the ground floor okay and then we can quite simply get us the ruler for testing and we'll run it along on the B track for example and look at the gap and that is as low as you'd want <coughs> I think that's adequate um, if we wanted more room, then we could, we could, as I say, cut away the underside of this. But I don't really see any need to do that if it plays well. I mean, it's nice to have the ability to go further down, um, but it's quite, it'd be quite a lot of grinding to do uh, to actually take this down. So we have to go kind of from halfway along there. It's doable, um, but let, let's. We've got some, we've got some various sacrificial strings kicking about. Put it on there. So I just took off some LP tens, for example. We'll put these back on. I've got some. I think I've got some new ones in the. Oh, I can't remember now. James put some in, I think. So let's let's have a look quickly. I've got to go pick up the car now so <clears throat> now this is a standard Les Paul string so I don't know if it's going to be long enough to double round yep that's okay good right, so this is just a positioning positioning test so let's just get it wound on quickly quite good I mean I'm not sure if you'd want to go any higher but let's put this whole set on and put it under load and if it if it doesn't work <coughs> at this action then we'll just we'll get and grind it down which is the sort of tart well it was even we were, we were resigned to doing that in the first place <coughs> I have a feeling we might just get away with not needing to do it bellowing today. Um, how did I end up putting that the wrong way around the tuna post? What the? What is going on with me? Why? I've never done that before in my 
life. I've just wound this on the wrong way completely. Backwards. That's bizarre. I don't know what I'm doing. Is this the wound, ground, wound, ground, wound? What was I doing? Sorry. I was some. Um, that's the weirdest thing. I just round, wound the, e, the low E string on backwards like I had never wound a string on before. Weird. If you're ever winding on stray old strings like this, as they come around the first time, ensure you grab the um, ragged sticky up end and shove it northwards so it sticks up otherwise it has a tendency to want to drag downwards and then underneath and across the finish of your headstock <coughs> don't know why it just what it just does every time and then it, it if you're not careful it will drag a little circle of scratch all the way around the demon This is mainly a test set, really. I think I'll we'll go digging in James's guitar case and find some new strings shortly. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I can't remember if I actually brought them out here into the shed, but possibly not. Just on the mark with this bridge, and it is definitely an improvement on the previous one. Not as sexy looking in terms of technology, of course, we know that, but it's um, the, the difference is in the fact it will we'll get the required action out of it, whereas we couldn't with the other one. But we'll double check it, and you know, as I say before, I will. Uh, if necessary, take it off and grind it down if we need that extra bit of adjustment room because that was the whole point of putting a 15 quid bridge on there so that we could grind it to bits if we needed to. It was not precious. Is that, is that on, on there at all? No, it's not, is it? Holy cowabunga. Kind of humid today still. It's getting cooler from here on inwards apparently. <clears throat> Seventy-nine percent humidity according to my machine thing.
right, this will give us uh, a playing action on the low E of hmm, 1.25 <clears throat> <clears throat> and high on the top one. We've got no more adjustment room downwards. I'm just going to wonder, I'm going to take a punt on one final thing. Uh, I'm trying to think of a way of doing it. <clears throat> Hold on. Hold on. I need one final thing. This is what I need. Mean. Let's see if I can get any a little bit further down on that far post. It'll go, Captain. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's running at one point seven five. So we will need to do a little bit of <clears throat> a little bit of lower uh, cutaway on the underside of there because we're at the stops. That's fine. That's fine. Fine. We'll come back to it. At least we've got the bridge fitted. side that's what we'll do okay let's put this hang this away for now and come back to it it's a little bit tricky because it's um it's not perfectly positioned <coughs> I need to, to just make sure when we when we do um, we do come to Fit it finally, just got to make sure it's fitting on properly. It might be that we take a little file to the back end of there as well. Nice though. There you go. Simplified bridge. Um, yeah. Well. Okay. We'll have to take it off and shave it down. But that's going to happen later. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take a picture of it for so James can see how it looks. I've got to go pick up the car. I've got to go pick out the car. Thank. All right. See you later. Started. Well, yeah, kind of. Well, look.
Come on, magic arm. Here we are. I just cut down the underside of this bridge. Now, of course, it allows it to tilt forward. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, but it allows it to get low enough to have a decent action. And you could lift the whole lot up if you want to go higher. This is really low. This is about 1.2 mils on the base side on one. Hallelujah. 1.1 on the top side. And it's heading almost into the territory of um, you know that fret problems, uh, you know buzzy thing, uh, yeah fret buzz. Anyway, that's not a problem right now. So we're now going to give it back to James. Now that it's done. And it's just a, you know, it's a compromise. There's no way of making it play any lower really. Or no, no way of getting a bridge lower short of um, cutting a trench out here, routing a trench. Now one thing I'm not sh sure about is the intonation. It's spot on. There we go. Not even going to bother altering it. That is bang on the nail. Right, there you go. Done. Replaced. Playable. You know, you, you can get down and Rock and roll as a keeper. All right. Suppose people want to know what this Gordon Smith sounds like. Um, so <coughs> let me just put it. No more. No more exciting or well not compared to any other guitar really. It's not bad, it's nice and simple. Interesting. That's that's quite um, it's quite a crunchy sort of sound. Even from a uh, yeah, clean channel. So.
it's um it's a nice old looking vintage looking i don't really know how old this is vintage looking feeling guitar uh, compound radius neck some people say 12 to 14 my measurements seem to suggest 14 to 16 um, and who knows what is the truth about it but it's compound anyway it changes it goes down which is always quite good um, it's light relatively light and um, it's good looking and simple really like what couldn't what isn't there to like about it and it's got a meaty pickup i like the tone of that it's got lots of lots of power um simple guitar but again anyone could make one of these i have to say oh not even looking you're not even looking at my handiwork anyone could make one of these um you know it's a flat slab of wood with a neck a glued in neck um anyone could make one i mean i'm not trying to make one like this but oh look i happen to be making one like that it's about as easy as you can get when it comes to making things anyway but if you did, well, the, the reason why this bridge is struggling and the other one was no good at all is because the neck angle on this is not as much, not as great as a uh, Gibson neck angle. And yet it's trying to, it's trying to behave like a, a junior, less, less Paul junior. Um, and for some reason that, that angle is smaller, which means you have to find some sort of low profile neck if you want to have any adjustment room. So this is, uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is pretty much on its stop still, and it's only just about good. Um, that's partly because it's tilting upwards, so it's a bit of a diminishing returns. The more you take off to allow it to sit lower, the more it's going to flip up, unless you, you get a washer onto there, which of course you can't because it's a single uh, single unit. Anyway, it's, it's on there and it's working, and actually it plays really nice. So there you go, that is the Gordon Smith yeah, GS160 made in Britain. Serial number 09398. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, not bad. I mean, yeah, it's just a nice thing, man. Um, I prefer it a bit thicker than that, but it's still a good guitar. Okay.